Good morning, guys. God bless each and every one of you. Welcome back to Sword of Faith. It's Monday, and I'm just thankful to be a part of the body of Christ, to be living in His mercy and His grace. Uh, I've been studying the Word, and um, we're going to do a study today. I'm going to call these more or less studies. I guess we could call them sometimes preachings or teachings or studies or or prophecies or, or you know, whatever it is. But this is, you know, just something I've been studying here lately. Uh, I hope each and every one of you are well. I hope that the Lord has been resting in you guys and put all your faith and your trust in Christ. The time is so close, guys. Each day I wake up, I feel, I feel like it could be the day. Now, I don't know the day nor hour. None of us do. But the season is ripe for a harvest, a gathering of the wheat to be stored into the barn and for the tares to be bundled up and to be burned. There's so much wickedness in this world. We're going to look at that in the scriptures today. That was prophesied that would happen. Well, it's here. Lawlessness has been going on. Just be thankful that we have a Savior. We have a King, a Messiah, who came and gave His life for each and every one of us to pull us out of this iniquity and this bondage. Pull us out of the deep, miry pit. What had us in a snare and in a trap. I'm so thankful that He came and He gave us life because he saw me, he saw you, and he saw that leper in Matthew chapter 8 that was willing. He didn't look upon the leprosy. You know, Christ didn't look upon any of our sins. Does he hate lawlessness? Well, yes, the Bible concludes that. He loves righteousness. I'm just so thankful, guys. Beyond thankful. Just to be in his mercy and in his grace to be in His will. And today we're going to do His will. And I encourage each and every one of you, do the will of the Father. There's nothing more pleasing than when you proclaim His word to whomever it is. You never know what that word is going to do. It may pierce the heart and you may get rejected, guys. If you get rejected, just shake the dust off your feet. So many people that get rejected. And I've been guilty of this early on in my Christian walk as we learn and we grow. Let me encourage you to shake the dust off your feet if you're rejected for the name of Jesus Christ. All it will do will cause envy, strife, and bitterness in your heart. Move on. Press on and go into another house. Go to another vessel. Somebody wants to hear the truth. The gospel of Jesus Christ. Somebody wants to be saved and inherit eternal life. Don't let, just, be, just, just because you're rejected, don't let that discourage you. All that name the name of Christ. Yes, we depart from iniquity. We also go through suffering. We're rejected. You know, I think the rejection is what hurt Jesus more than anything. Even going through all the pain on the cross. I think him being rejected was the most painful thing. Think about how it is to be rejected, guys. It's a horrible, horrible thing to feel that rejection. So let's do a study this morning, guys. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. John chapter 1. We're going to start in verse 19. God is good. He's faithful to keep everything that he said. He promised you eternal life. And I can assure you, God's not going to break that promise. But there's something you have to do. There's something I have to do. We got to hear the word. We just don't hear the word. We have to be a doer of the word. He said, why do you call me Lord, Lord, but you don't do the things that I say? The book of James also says, be a doer of the word. He says, I'll show you my faith by my works. Now, what does he mean by that? 
Let's look into the scriptures. Let's dig in. Let's press into the kingdom of heaven today. Amen. John chapter 1. We're going to look at verse 19. Amen. It's Monday morning. I'm going to have me a cup of coffee here. I'm just so thankful. So thankful for the Lord and his mercy. His grace. John chapter 1. We're going to look at verse 19. This is the record of John. When the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, Who art thou? And he confessed and denied not, but confessed, I am not the Christ. And they asked him, What then? Art thou Elias? And he saith, I am not. Or it could be said, Elijah. We know that Elias had the double portion, is what he asked for. Art thou the prophet? And he answered, No. Then said they unto them, Who art thou? That we may give an answer to them that sent us. What sayest thou of thyself? He said, I am the voice of one crying in the wilderness. Make straight the way of the Lord. As said the prophet Isaiah. Why was he crying in the wilderness to make a straight way for the Lord? What does this straight way mean? This straight way means simply this, that that old wretched man, that old man, he must be crucified. That he must die so that this new man made in the image of Jesus Christ, who isn't lawless anymore, who doesn't, who goes and sins no more, just like it was told to the woman that committed adultery, who takes heed to what Jesus says. You know, John was told, that who you see the Spirit falling upon, that is He whom came before you and is coming after you that will baptize with the Holy Spirit. That is the Son of God. That is Him. What is the straight way? You know what sin does in our life? It makes a crooked path in our life. It causes chaos, commotion. What does a straight path do? A path where there's no sin, where you're not sinning. When you stay on that straight hand path, when you put your hand to that plow and you don't look back, guess what? You're in His grace. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Thank you, Jesus, for your word. That's the straight way. That's what He was crying. Repent. Confess and forsake your sin. Be baptized. Be cleansed, ye sinners. Don't be double-minded. You'll read that in the book of James. But don't be double-minded, but be cleansed, you sinners. Make a straight path for the Lord. Because God is coming back. Why make a straight path for the Lord? Because when he comes back to get that faithful bride, that chaste virgin, as Paul says, he's coming back to get it on that straight path. When that trumpet sounds and he gathers the wheat, the wheat are only going to be on that straight path. It's not going to be a crooked path. He's coming back for a pure and spotless bride, blameless in their heart, who loves his word and abides in his word and lives it all the days of their life. Hallelujah. And they which were sent, this is verse 24, were of the Pharisees. And they asked him and said unto him, Why baptizest thou then? If thou be not the Christ, nor Elias, neither that prophet, John answered them, saying, I baptize with water. But there standeth one among you, whom ye know not. See, if they would have heard John's words, they would have knew him. Because John's words were the same words of Jesus Christ. Why? Because they came from the Father. The words that John spoke, the messenger, were the same words that Jesus Christ spoke. Amen. Why did they not know him? Because they would not hear his word. You must hear his word. And you must be a doer of that word. If God said to go and sin no more, then that's what it means. If he said to make a straight path, a straight path is a sinless path. Sin creates chaos and it creates a crooked path. One sin, when it conceives, it brings forth death. You'll read that in the book of James. One sin. Amen. 
Hallelujah. Verse 27, he it is who coming after me is preferred before me. Whose shoe latch it, I am not worthy to unloose. These things were done in Bethabara beyond Jordan, where John was baptizing. Amen. Sin is not the straight path. Grace is the straight path. You were a sinner. You were a wretched man. You were lost. And now you're found. Amen. Turn to Matthew chapter 11. We're going to look at verse 7. Matthew chapter 11. We're going to look at verse 7. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Verse 7. We're going to start in verse 7. And as they departed, Jesus began to say unto the multitudes concerning John, John the Baptist, What went ye out into the wilderness to see? A reed shaken with the wind. What did you go to see? Remember, those that don't hear it. You see, they wouldn't hear John's words. A lot of people today still will not hear his words. John had this, remember, the body of Christ is in one accord. One accord. In Acts chapter 4, they came together in one accord. In the upper room, they came together in one accord. And they were baptized with the Holy Ghost. Now there's, obviously there's many different members in the body, but we all have one accord. We hear his voice. And his voice is entirely against sin, unrighteousness, wickedness, evil. It's against all those things. But look what he says here. Look what Jesus says. What did you go out to see? A reed shaken with the wind? Verse 8, but what went ye out to see? He's going to ask them again. A man clothed in soft remnant. Behold, they that wear soft clothing are in king's houses. What did you really go out to see? What persuaded you to go out and see what was in that wilderness? What was baptizing in the Jordan? What was persuaded? Because you didn't go out to see anybody clothed in the soft remnant. Nice clothes and beautiful jewels and gold and all those things. You went out to, you went out to see something. Something, something had grabbed a hold of your heart. Something got you to go out there to see what was going on. Were you looking for a Messiah? What was going on? <laughs> what would you have to see? A prophet? Yea, I say unto you, a more than a prophet. John said he's not a prophet, though. We just read that. He also said he's not the Messiah. What went you out to see? Hallelujah to the Lamb. For this is he of whom it is written, Behold, I send my messenger before thy face, which shall prepare thy way before thee. Same words. Repent and turn from your sin. You shall be saved with a free gift that is from Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Verily I say unto you, verse 11, among them that are born of women, there hath not risen a greater than John the Baptist. Wow, powerful words, powerful words. Notwithstanding, he that is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. He just said this is pretty much the greatest person to ever be born. Nobody greater born from a woman than John the Baptist, but the person that is least in the kingdom of heaven, the person that hears this word and does this word. If John cried in the wilderness to repent and forsake all of your sin and come into Christ, should we take heed to that and do that? Or should we just do that on Sunday? Or should we just do that for a week and then have a cheat day? Or should we do it all the days of our life like John said? Should we be new and born again, like Jesus said? You know, to be born in the Spirit means a new life. Are you living a new life? Or are you trying to put old wine into a new bottle? Now, I can assure you that bottle will burst. If that's what you're trying to do, then you need to go back. And you need to take heed to what John said. And you know there's other messengers. You're a messenger if you're crying out with one accord under what John was doing. 
God still has messengers today doing it. Crying out for souls to repent. Amen. The spirit, the spirit of Elijah has not died. It's alive and it's well. I can assure you of that. Christ is not dead. He is risen. And the power of the blood of the Lamb is greater than anything in this world. It overcomes all sin. It treads upon serpents and scorpions. It quenches every fiery dart of the devil. It is stronger than anything in this world. It comes from the throne of God Almighty, the power of grace. Verse 12, And from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffereth violence. And the violent take it by force, for all the prophets and the law prophesied until John. And if ye will receive it, if you'll hear it, if you'll hear and receive it, hallelujah to the Lamb. This is Elias, or Elijah, which was for to come. This is what Malachi, the prophet, prophesied that was coming, a messenger crying in the wilderness to make a straight path for the Lord before the, before the coming of the Lord, before the, the day of the Lord, the great, great and dreadful day of the Lord. He that hath ears to hear. Now, one of my ears is clogged right now, but I can still hear. You know why I can hear? Because it's in my heart. Amen. It's in my heart. He that hath ears to hear, let him hear. But whereunto shall I liken this generation? It is likened to children sitting in the markets and calling unto their fellows and saying, We have piped unto you. You have not danced. I'm playing music for you, and you're not even dancing. You're not hearing it. We have mourned unto you, and you have not lamented. I mourn, and you laugh. For John came neither eating nor drinking, and they say he hath a devil. The Son of Man came eating and drinking, and they say, Behold, a man gluttonous. Either way I come, you won't hear. John came not eating and drinking. The Son of Man came eating and drinking. What's gonna? Wh wh what do you want me to do? You won't hear the words. I've sent both. I've sent it both ways. You got to take heed to what the word of God says. Submission to the whole word of God, because man will not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of the Lord. Behold, a man gluttonous and wine member, a friend of publicans and sinners, but wisdom is justified of her children. Amen. Turn to John chapter 8. Let's go back to the book of John. Why would they not hear? You see, when you don't hear the same message that John was preaching, one accord. Even though John was sent another way, he wasn't eating and drinking, and Christ was eating and drinking. But they always tried to say, they, they found this, nothing was ever good enough. Because they would not hear the words of the messenger. What did Jesus do? He came to serve us the word of God. And to be our sacrifice, our living sacrifice, that God would accept us if we acknowledge and believe that Jesus Christ died for our sin. And we would be new, created in the image of Christ Jesus. Not just saying that, not just acknowledging that, but living that, be walking epistles that are written and read. To be separate from the world, crucified to the world, but alive unto God. That the old man is dead and Christ has done all things new through you and your body. And it shows you're now a light that is set up on a hill, cannot be hid. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. John chapter 8. Look at verse 1. Now we know this story about the woman that committed adultery and the Pharisees took her. They took her in. And um, later at the feet of Jesus and wanted to stone her. And, um, and, and let's just jump over here and look at, um, let's, let's start at verse 5. They, lay her, they lay, throw her in, lay her at the feet of Jesus. And they say that the law of Moses commands that we stone her. What do you say? <clears throat> look what he says. Let's look at verse 6. 
This they said, tempting him, that they might have to accuse him. But Jesus stooped down and with his finger wrote on the ground as though he heard them not. Once again, heard. Think about this, guys. Why did he hear them not? Your sin will separate you from God. God will not hear you unless you, if you have sin in your life, and you acknowledge the messenger crying in the wilderness that was John to repent and turn, confess, and forsake your sin, then you will be heard. Why did he stoop down and write on the ground? Jesus didn't hear them. What did he say to them? Those of you that don't have any sin, cast the first stone. And they all walked out, pierced in their hearts. They all walked out. And then he looks at the woman that committed adultery. Where, where are thine condemners? Nowhere, Lord, she says. He says, I don't condemn you either. Go and sin no more. Now, why would he tell her to go and sin no more if she was not able to do that? I don't think Jesus would tell us or tell her let me just say this, tell her to go and sin no more if she was not able. You're able to do all things through the power of Jesus Christ. You can tread upon any serpent scorpion. You can quench any fiery dart from the devil. You have power upon high. Because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. I just preached that message. Um, it's the last message I preached, guys. I encourage each and every one of you to go listen to it. It's he, he is living in you. Hear those words. Don't listen to those false pastors and preachers that tell you that you're always going to fall short in sin. No matter how much you strive in this world, you're always going to fall short from time to time. That is a lie. Those are liars and deceivers. They transform themselves into ministers of righteousness, angels of light. The Bible says, uh, as Satan transforms himself into an angel of light, he looks righteous on the outside, but on the inside, they're telling you things that are not of God. He that is in you is greater. But what I really want to look at here is simply this. He heard them not, so that when they continued asking him, he lifted up himself, said to them, he that is without sin among you. See, there's the word sin. He that is without sin. Why did he not hear them? Because they had sin. Did the, did the woman that committed adultery have sin? She also had sin. Jesus was trying to get a point across. Why are you trying to expose the moat in your brother's eye when you have one in your own? Really, they weren't trying to cast it out. They were trying to kill them. They were trying to kill her. See, a man of God will see a problem in their brother's eye. And their eye will be clean because they're men of God or women of God. And their duty to do is to cast that moat out. Why did he tell Peter, Peter, do you love me? Then go feed my sheep now. You see, you've wept bitterly, Peter. You're ready now, Peter. You're ready to put your hand to the plow and not look back. You've let the flesh go. You had many faults. You had a hard time letting that moat go out of your eye, but you let it go, Peter. Now you're ready. Go feed my sheep. If you love me, you'll keep the moat out of your eye, and you'll go cast the moat out of your brother's eye. If they don't receive you, then you'll shake the dust off your feet, Peter, and you'll go into another house, because I can assure you, you will find somebody, Peter, that wants the moat cast out of their eye. If they reject you, Peter, they're not rejecting you. They're rejecting me. As they rejected Sam, Samuel in the book 1 Samuel, as they desired to have a king set over them like all the other nations, because they saw Samuel was getting old. They desired a king, hurt Samuel, and they rejected him. But God gave him words of encouragement. Samuel, they're not rejecting you. They're rejecting me. Give them what they want. Hearken to what they want. You see, sometimes God will let you have what you want in the flesh just to let you know that your ways are not good, that you must walk in the Spirit all the days of your life. You know, Paul was led by the Spirit. In Acts, you'll read in Acts chapter 16, 
when he was sent to Mace, uh, Macedonia, that he got a vision from a man. And, and actually, he wanted to go preach before that in another country as he was journeying on that journey uh, to Philippi. However, the Holy Spirit had forbid him to go and preach um, because he was led by the Spirit. He would not move. He would not act. He would not do nothing unless he had the word from the Holy Spirit. And that, he knew that was from God. And when he got the vision, he knew that that was the vision. A man crying out, saying, come help us in Macedonia. And he went. He went to Macedonia. And obviously, uh, the journey happened and continued on from there. Because he was led and he was obedient to God and his word. And was led by the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah to the Lamb. But why would Jesus, why did he stoop down? And he did not hear them, the Bible says. He heard them not. Because they tried to go another way. Remember, they would not hear. They would not hear John. But we're going to look at that. Look over. Let's turn over to uh, verse thirty-four. Same chapter, guys. He's still talking here to the Pharisees. We're going to look at verse thirty-four. Jesus answered them. Verily, verily, I say unto you, whosoever commit a sin is the servant of sin. He plainly says it. If you sin, you're servant to Satan. You're not my servant. He purely gave the word. That was the truth. If you're still living in sin, don't be deceived that you are a child of God. Because you're not. Until you come the way that God has commanded all men to come, which is forsaking and confessing sin, repentance from the old man, crucifying the old man, dying to the way of, of that man, and now living unto God all the days of your life. You're not a child of God. That is a deception. Now, a lot of people are telling you and preaching to you that you are a child of God. That is a lie. They're deceivers. And they look very righteous. In the community's eyes, they're very righteous. You see, in the world's eyes, they look righteous. But God uses things that are foolish to confound the things that are wise. He always has. He always does. You'll read that in 1 Corinthians, as Paul writes to the Corinthians. You'll read that in the book of Corinthians, the foolishness that man thinks. <laughs> oh, it's glorious, guys. God will raise a stone up if he has the desire to, to proclaim his words. Amen. Whosoever committeth sin is a servant of sin. And the servant abideth not in the house forever, but the son abideth forever, or ever. If the Son, therefore, shall make you free, ye shall be free indeed. What's he talking about? You're going to be free. If you hear my word and you acknowledge me and you love me, I'm going to set you free entirely from your sin. I came to set the captives free. I came to break that bondage that Ishmael, that seed of Ishmael, and give you that seed of Isaac. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. And the servant abideth not in the house. Okay. Uh, verse 37. I know that ye are Abraham's seed, but ye seek to kill me. Because my word hath no place in you. They won't hear it. If they won't hear it properly, it's not going to get in there properly. You must hear it. That the wages of sin is death. But the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus. You have to kill the old man. He has to go. He was a sinner from the beginning. Satan has deceived him into thinking that he has some righteousness in him. The, regardless, the old man has to go. The Bible's concluded that all men, all have fallen short of the glory of God. That's the conclusion of what it says. You read it in the book of Romans. But praise be to Jesus Christ. For breaking that yoke of bondage that was on us. He fulfilled the law. And he gave us another chance. I'm getting a phone call from my dad right now. So if you guys will just bear with me just a minute. Amen. Amen. But Christ came to give us that other chance, guys. He 
He says, I speak that which I have seen with my father, and ye do that which ye have seen with your father. In the verse 38, who are, who's their father? Well, if you sin, your father is the devil. You can say you're righteous all day long. You can go to church all day long. Even the, even the demons believe and tremble. Satan sitting in church, you better believe he is. Jezebel sitting in church, you better believe she is. Is Delilah sitting in church? You better believe she is. Are wicked spirits sitting in church? You better believe they are. It doesn't matter about your appearance. It doesn't matter about those things. It matters what happens on the inside of the cup. People want to condemn you when you don't go to church. I have no home church right now, but I know that the church is from within me and I am a part of the body of Christ because I know what he has done in me. Amen. Amen. Let's look at verse, jump down to verse 43. Why do you, under, why do you not understand my speech? There it is again. What is he saying? Why do you not understand my speech? Even because you cannot hear my word. Why can they not hear his word? Because their sin has separated them from God. Sin will put a veil over your eye. And no matter what you do, until you remove that sin, until you confess and forsake it, you will not be able to hear the words of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Now let's turn back to John chapter 1. John chapter 1. Hallelujah to the Lord. We're going to look at verse 29. The next day John seeth Jesus coming, coming unto him and saith, Behold, the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. The whole target for the messenger was to come against the old wretched man's sin. This is he of whom I said after me, Cometh a man which is preferred before me, for he was before me. I knew him not but that he should be made manifest to Israel. Therefore, I am come baptizing with water. I'm making a straight path for, for his children to be received. What is a straight path? A path where there's no sin. Why did he tell the woman that committed adultery to go and sin no more? So she, she would get on that straight path that John was crying in the wilderness to repent. He came to take away the sin of the world, not for you to stay in it, not for you to... Do it for a month and then say, you know what? I'm going to cheat today or I'm going to have a day or I'm going to, you know, God will forgive me. If you have that, if, if that's your heart's mindset, then your heart is not right. You need to examine your heart. Your heart needs to be single and focused on Jesus Christ and everything that you say and everything that you do. Be born in the spirit and mortify the deeds of the flesh and you shall live. Amen. Hallelujah to the Lord. Now let's look at Hebrews chapter 1. We're almost done, guys. I've got a few more verses to read. We're going to be done with our study today. Hebrews chapter 1. Just a couple verses here. God, who at sun-dry times, verse 1, and in diverse manners spake in times past unto the fathers by the prophets, has in these last days spoken, spoken. And when something is spoken, something is also heard. Spoken unto us by his Son, whom he hath appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the worlds, who be in the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person in the upholding all things by the word of his power. The word of his power, hallelujah to the Lamb when he had by himself purged our sins, cleansed them, wiped them away, abolished them, hallelujah to the Lamb of God, sat down on the right hand of the, of the majesty on high, jump over to chapter 2, uh, chapter 2, we're going to look at the same thing, verse 1, therefore we ought to give the more earnest heed to the things which we have heard, what have you heard? Have you heard the messenger crying out for your soul in the wilderness to repent? Folks, that's all I'm doing. Any man of God, what did he tell Peter? Peter, if you love me, go and feed my sheep. Go tell them. What did Peter say in Acts when he was confessing? 
to, to repent and be baptized. What was John the Baptist doing? Repent and be baptized. What is Chris doing? Repent and be baptized. What is any man of God doing? They're saying the same word with one accord. To repent and be baptized and be filled with the Holy Ghost. Put your hand to the plow and not look back. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Glory to God. That's all we can do. You must hear this word, and it must get in your heart, and you must be cleansed on the inside. Woo! Glory to God. Earnest heed the things which we have heard, lest at any time we should let them slip. For if the word spoken by angels was steadfast, and every transgression and disobedience received a just recompense of reward. Hallelujah to the Lamb. How shall we escape if we neglect so great a salvation? We won't. You're not going to escape it. It's the strongest name in heaven and in earth. His name has power and dominion over all things. We're going to see that. We're going to look at that next. It's the name of Jesus Christ that has power over your sin, over death, over everything. It can deliver you. It can guide you. It can lead you. It can lead you through the Spirit. Hallelujah. When you're in the wilderness, when you're going through a fiery trial, when you're in a lion's den, when you're going through through fires with the trials of this life, that's the name, hallelujah, to the Lamb of God. It has power in heaven. It sits at the right hand of the Father. Even when Stephen was stoned to death by the Pharisees, what did he do? He looked up to heaven and said, I see my Lord in his power sitting at the right hand of the Father. Lay not this end of their charge. Hallelujah to the Lamb. You will how shall we escape? We won't escape. Nobody's going to escape that name. That name, every tongue is going to confess. Every knee is going to bow that Jesus Christ is Lord. Let your name be written in the Lamb's book of life. Today is the day of salvation. Hallelujah. God also bearing witness bearing them witness both with signs and wonders with signs and wonders the miracles proved it jesus fed the five thousand jesus walked on the water jesus healed the lame jesus healed the blind jesus can heal in your ear jesus can heal whatever problem you're going through i can assure you there's power in the blood of the lamb hallelujah to the lamb of god he showed it with signs and wonders with diverse miracles and gifts of the holy ghost according to his own will hallelujah to the lamb matthew we're going to look at Matthew chapter 28. Praise be to God Almighty. May God give you the power and the strength to overcome your sin, your iniquity. Don't turn back. Don't look back. Stay focused on the cross of Jesus Christ. What did Jesus say after he was, after he was crucified and after he was risen and after he appeared again to the disciples and to Mary Magdalene and his, and his mom and all those things? What was said? What, what did he say? Look at Matthew chapter 28. We're going to look at verses, verse 16. Matthew chapter 28, verse 16. It's the same message, guys. He told it to Peter. You'll read it in, the, in John chapter 21 to go and feed my sheep if you love me. Matthew chapter 28, verse 16. What does he say? Then the 11 disciples went away into Galilee, into a mountain where Jesus had appointed them. We know Judas was already, he, he, he had already hung himself. There was only 11 at this time. And when they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. All power. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. That sounds like the messenger crying in the wilderness. That sounds like the same spirit that was on John the Baptist. One accord. Don't try to bring your sin into Christ. Allow Christ to cleanse it. All things must be new in Christ. Don't try to bring old wine and put it in a new wine skin is what I'm saying. That's not the message that was being cried in the wilderness. <clears throat> Go ye therefore and teach all nations. What are you teaching them? The word of God. To repent, confess your sin and forsake your sin and be baptized with the Holy Spirit and you will have this power upon high. You must believe that by faith. Do you believe that with all of your heart? <clears throat> if you believe it, then it, it, will, it will become evident in your life. It, it will portray itself. You won't just hear it and say, I acknowledge that Jesus died for my sins. 
and continue to and continue to live like the old man. You're not doing a half work or a 90, 99% work. It's got to be 100. All things have to be new in Christ Jesus. Teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I've, I have commanded you. Did, what did he command the woman that committed adultery? To go sin no more. Why would he give her that commandment? And not me or anybody else. Or Peter or James or John or Thaddeus. Nathaniel, or any of these disciples that he's speaking to. Why would he tell her to do that, but not them? Beware. The Bible says God has no respect to persons. And we almost come the same way. You know, we're his body. We love Jesus. He's the head. Jesus commanded all men to repent, to turn from their sin and their iniquity, and be baptized with the Holy Ghost. That was the message. What did he tell them? You do the same. You've been given power upon high. I go to the Father, and if I go to the Father, I will send you the Comforter, the Holy Spirit. He will comfort you. He will be with you. He will guide you into all spirit and into all truth. Amen. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. That concludes the study today, guys. I hope you guys were blessed. You know, it's, guys, we're living in a time that we need to draw, we need to draw nigh to Jesus as much, as, with all of our heart, with all of our strength, with all of our soul, with all of our might. It's not, this isn't a fairy tale, guys. I speak this because I know it's true. There's no doubt in me whatsoever that Jesus Christ came to this earth everything in this Bible is true and that there is a heaven and that there is a hell. I know for a fact it's not a dream or a fairy tale to me. It's true. He is the way, the truth, and the life. He has set me free from sin. Do I listen to those individuals that say you can never have complete victory over your sin? No. That's, that's not scripture power of the blood of the Lamb is stronger than anything of this life. There's nothing greater, nothing stronger than the blood of the Lamb. I encourage each and every one of you today. If you have sin in your life and you've taken on that deception that you can bring, that you can have sin and enter the kingdom of heaven, or that you can continue to live as any of the old man, you have to lose your life to find it. You have to lose your life to find it. What does that mean? All of it has to go. Hear what that means. That doesn't mean to sell your house, your car, your clothes, everything that you have. Hear and know what that means. Be born in the Spirit. He tells Nicodemus where the wind listens. You don't see it, but you feel it. You know it's there. You know the Spirit's there. You can feel it. You know the flesh is dead without the soul. You'll read that in the book of James. He says, just as faith is dead without works. What does it mean to have works? Are we justified by works? No, not entirely by works. But how can faith live without works? It can't, according to the book of James. It cannot. Don't be deceived. Here's so many false pastors say, by faith alone, if you have faith, then you also have works. It's a guarantee. Somebody that just acknowledges Jesus, they're just hearers of the word. They're not doers. If you love him, you will go out. You will find his sheep. You will search for his sheep. You will feed his sheep. The manna that came down from heaven. The true living one. Samson drank that water after he slayed a thousand with the jawbone of an ass. The children of Israel drank that water as they were thirsting in the wilderness. The, the Samaritan woman at the well, I also think she got a taste of that water. And I can assure you that 
if you submit to God, His ways, and He is true, that you can also get a taste of that living water, and you'll be set free for the remainder of your days. Let God be true to every man a liar. All I can do is proclaim God's word. So that can, that's that's it for today, guys. Thank you all for tuning in. Continue, guys, to stay strong in the word. Be blessed. Continue in prayer. With thanksgiving in all things that you do. So I love each and every one of you. And God bless, guys. Thank you.